Hi everybody, I'm Jerome right here <coughs> again, and you're joining me on my YouTube Jeronification channel. Okay, um, in this video I'm going to be describing ancient um, facts about Chinese soccer and depictions of, of, of um, ancient Chinese soccer. And it's also my position that the idea of soccer actually um, is founded on also on that of an encryption style, which references that of how mankind was created, um, genetically bridged, and genetically altered from their originating state of um, that of um, Africa, reptilian apes, um, Africans, reptilian apes, and um, other creatures that genetically contributed to the many likenesses of that of today's mankind. Um, it's my position that there's an ancient knowledge that it is known globally to a select few while the masses are kept in the dark about all of this information, this ancient um, information. Um, there's a denied benefit to the masses, which would be that of being medicinal, um, just from the sense of the knowledge of having, of who you truly are and what creatures you evolved from, would give you a sense of direction that would be far greater than that in the one that you are going now, based on the belief system that you've been given. I guess that's a better way to sum it up. All right. Well, now I'm going to give you ancient. Chinese soccer. First of all, I'm going to read this to you. Soccer in ancient China. It is supposed to be, um, it is, um, is what I'm reading here is, um, evidently it is Chinese in the Kwai Kingdom, 319 BC to 201 BC, who first invented soccer, um, the soccer game during the spring and autumn period. In the next thousand years or so, this, pati this particular form of sport was known as Kanju kickball in ancient China. The reference in Saikar can be found in the Chinese classics, Records of History, okay, by Simi Kwa, um, 14, I mean, what is that, on um, 145 BC to 87 BC, 87 BC, and strategies of the warning states, whatever that's supposed to mean. However, my thing is that when you understand what is being signified because when I see this soccer ball being kicked around first of all let me show you that this is the cycle nation of, 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 um, of life of creation of genetics that's what this is that's why you see them in this circle like this okay the soccer ball is being utilized as that of our ancient founding genetics, which represents that as Africans, ape, and the founding genetics, which actually all derive therefrom. Let me show you what I'm talking about, first of all. Look at right, let me, let me come over here to this side. Look at right here. First of all, what in the hell would birds be doing in on a soccer um, game? Or dogs? just doesn't make no sense. I don't care how you want to slice it or dice it or add it up. It doesn't make no sense, does it? Until after I'm going to show you how it does make sense. Showing you that this Asian guy, this Chinese guy, bridged, was genetically bridged through the genetics of birds, which represents our ancient dinosaur genetics. And in doing so, his genetic, these genetics took flight in him, showing this guy now balancing these genetics. Look, he's balancing these genetics, first of all, in his nose, these ancient bird genetics, which represents that of dinosaur people. He's balancing these genetics. These genetics are shown in his body flying genetically. Now it's shown that he dominated these genetics. You see here the birds. Look, he's balancing, first of all, there's the birds. 
Now he's balancing the ball, which is genetics of the birds. Now look, now it's showing you that the ball is that of the birds. Look at this. From here to here, the ball is now the birds. He's balancing, he balanced those genetics. Now these genetics are in his body, okay, defeated. Now this in the next um, stable here, it's showing you that, in the next sequence here, showing you that there's this interduction um, of these dogs. The genetics of the dogs. And look at here, people, how it's showing you how these genetics are actually taken in and balanced and, and manipulated and came around, came around, came around. And it's showing you that there's a cyclonation where these genetics now are given back. And then it shows you how the Chinese people had genetically altered themselves. Began here, comes around, showing you the ancient dinosaur. Okay, which is the birds representing re that of reptilian. Okay, you heard of the, the, the story of the Levitron and the, be and the Behemoth. The Levitron from the ocean and the Behemoth on land, which is actually the ancient reference of that of the dog. That's what this is stating, people. The ancient bird represents the dinosaur. It represents the reptilian bloodline and that of our, our land animals. I mean, animals which are, re represents that of the Behemoth. And showing you how these genetics ran back into the likenesses of mankind at a certain point, which actually called for the likenesses of these Chinese people, or what well, the altering of the Chinese people. Now you probably say, I just can't buy into that, Jerome. Well, all of this is readable, just as I just said. I didn't say it in a scientific way. I said it in a layman's terms, but it explains why the birds... The dogs and the ball are all present. It shows you a balancing of these genetics that was introduced into man's kind's genes through via blood and semen. And that's what this is representing. And it shows you the direction and the paths that they're actually going in. Now, I'm going to show you something else. <sighs> Here is another ancient depiction of the same thing that is being said. <clears throat> Showing you ancient Chinese women. I got a larger image too, by the way, people. Let me take this one down. I'm going to take that down. And I'm because I'm going to come back to this. Ancient Chinese women. Let me go with the larger image. That would probably be better to do that. And they're saying that they're being taught. And they're in practice of the game of soccer. Now, mind you that the ball is green, which represents that of reptilian genetics. That's what I'm telling you. The red and part of her, the sole of her shoe represents that of blood. Now, what is being stated here? Well, this is the tree of life, people. This is why this tree is present. I'm going to show you some things about this, which makes everything that I've just said in the previously previous image more believable. <clears throat> Always where there is representation of these women and these genetics and these genetic alterings, in most cases, you will find this image. There's an eye, there's an eye. If you notice that the branch actually goes to the eye, in which I just showed you in another video, which is that is of ancient China, where, um, not ancient China, um, ancient Egypt, where that, if I have that there, uh, yes I do, where the tree is present, uh, I'm going to show you what is actually being stated there. If I can find my my highlighted version, which should be here. Now, why don't I have my highlighted version here? Uh, it's there somewhere, but how the hell with it? I'll go with it here. Where in the world is you at? I'm losing valuable minutes here. I hope I got. All right. Well, anyway, let me go. Let me go with this. What what I have here. The same thing is being stated. I can do it with this, I guess. Well, I showed you yesterday in my video where 
You see that alien looking creature and that branch going through the eye? There's the mouth, there's the neck, there's the shoulder columns. Okay, right there in that tree in this ancient Egypt glyph right there, that branch going through the eye. You can see my video, I just made a video on that um, yesterday. Okay, so just follow my videos and you'll get an understanding of what's going on. That is what is being said here with the branch going through the eyes, encrypted in this woman's hair towards the other side here. It's a tree of life. It's showing you how genetics are being branched over. And these humans being depicted are showing you how they were branched over to alter the originating genetics of that of mankind. If you follow this tree limb, it's broken over these ladies' heads. Now, I'm going to bring this in closer. I'm going to show you where that branch is broken at right there. You see? It just doesn't... You see that, that branch there? The branch is broken. Dude, it doesn't even... I mean, the, 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 the main point of the, the, the branch is not there. You know what it's showing you? That it was spliced. That represents splicing. And it shows you at both points that it's going down into this one here. Genetic bridging, people, with the tree of life. That's what this is representing. This branch, look, stops there. There's nothing there. Look, it's a, it's a, it's a void. It shows you the, the, the <clears throat> it shows you a tree limb broken. And the little small veins of that tree limb shows you they're bridged right here. And where are they bridged? Right here. Okay? Now, I gave you this witch-like woman who I dub as the mother of creation. So what in the hell is she doing in ancient China? And she's in all my discoveries too, by the way, people. Now, I'm going to take you back to this. Because you can't see that broken limb in this larger version here. It's actually broken there. Now, let me show you what's being stated by that limb being broken. Okay. What's being stated <clears throat> is that these genetics from the tree of life representing our African and ape ancestors genetically bridged over and an altering of these genes from their originating state um, causing for a new creation of genes to be created and the altering likenesses of mankind. So, what is being shown here? Again, there's, if you look closely in this he woman's head wrap, there's a bird there. See the wing, the head? I can bring it in closer. There's the head of the bird, there's the wing, and there's the body flying in this woman's head wrap. Of course, you have to know what the encryptions mean in order to see them. Now, you take that same bird. And you turn it. Remember the woman's likeness that I gave you here with the snake on her head? Well, I didn't tell you that there was a snake on her head. But there's a snake on her head, actually. And because that's the way the mother of creation actually appears. Now, if you take that woman head wrap and you turn it, it creates the face that is here with the branch going through its eye that's just like it's depicted in that in um, ancient Egypt glyphs. Isn't it amazing people? Now check this out. I'm turning her head and I put some white out in her eye to give her her witch-like appearance. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now this woman is turned now. I put white out as a dot to create her eye. And long and behold, there's her bottom lip, there's her nose, showing you these genetics snaking off. That's her, the witch-like woman is the mother of creation. This image, and look, and with the object coming off of her forehead, this object, I mean that image, is identical to what is there, showing you how they, reptilian genetics, bridged over into that of mankind, which is right here. Now, what is being stated here? Well, it's showing you that these reptilian genetics are now being balanced. And that's why you see this woman balancing this ball on the end of her foot. 
D genetics, ancient genetics, which branched off the tree of life. Our ape ancestors, our ancient African ancestors, were genetically bridged over with a reptilian gene. And now it was uncontrolled at one point, and now these people are stating that it is under control and they have control of this gene. New genetic lines now are actually being created and it shows you the direction that they are going in. That's what this whole implication is about. And that is what this implication is about. The same exact thing. The ancient bird, which represents that of our ancient dinosaur, the reptilian, showing you how these genes at each st um, point was balanced and genetically bridged. And this is why you have the implication of a soccer ball going around in the wheel of a life form, which represents the altering and genetic bridging of mankind's, well, these, these, this civilization of people's genetics on how they controlled our ape ancestor, African ancestor genetic, and genetically altered themselves. Makes sense, right? I know it does. Okay, now, I want to take this and show you something. Because this also, now this is also my position for how soccer was created in the first place. You know why? Because it is my position that these ancient glyphs that represent that of the ball which represents how the founding stone of genetics were altered and this new gene created this circular object which was the ball was at one point misinterpreted by those that wanted to understand why this object appeared in the glyphs and they figured it as some sort of game that of being soccer or that of being an object of a play or recreation and then soccer was created so I'm creating soccer for you, ex explaining to you the origins of soccer and why it was actually thought of as a game in the first place. Now, I want to take you to our ancient Mayan. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Hold on. I'm not done with Chinese yet. I'm going to give you another ancient Chinese. I'm going to give you another ancient China image. Not this one, but this one. So if you, if you Google ancient, ancient Chinese, China soccer, these images will come up on your number one search so you can verify. Now, a soccer ball. This is, this is, the, this is the, the first um, 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 soccer cup. A soccer ball cup. All right? This is what this will come up as if you Google this image. I mean, Google ancient Chinese soccer. So... They're telling you that this is a soccer ball. I'm telling you that that represents the ancient genetics of mankind. So if this is true, and I'm telling you that there's reptilian presences and all of that all shown here in this image, then I should be able to do the same thing with any image that is ancient and referencing these beings. It's my idea <clears throat> that I can do just that. Notice how the arms of these beings are these these Chinese. Um, this is the ancient China cup now. Are are lengthened. So what is that telling you that their their sleeves are long? No, it's not telling you that that they're wearing long sleeves. No, because that would be stupid for an artist to say. This is how these people are playing soccer with their sleeves all on. You know what this artist is telling you? That these are ancient genetics and they created the likeness of that of a snake, worm-like creature, showing you that these genetics were bridged over and these these new ki these children are actually donning a new gen gene that they were bridged over with and this is representing that of the serpent.
Look even here, people. If you look closely enough at this, you will actually see. Can I see an eye there? Can I give you an eye there? And an open mouth? Possibly. But this is what this is representing. New genes created and snaking off through the children. And even on this end, as you look over here, I don't know if that is a... I have to look at that. That even looks like an object as well coming out of the open mouth of that of that but if you look at this cup and you look at this for what it means look people why would this be in ancient China in the way that I just now just stated to you ancient genetics the ball being balanced now okay now I'm gonna take you to I wanna tie this to ancient Maya okay now, I'm going to take you to ancient Maya. Now, I'm going to take you to ancient Maya in comparison to that of ancient China. You see this guy here? He's kneeling down, one, one leg down, and the birds over his head. Flying, they actually they trans they transform it. Well, they in air here, in, in in air here, and this guy kneeling. So, why do we have the identical depiction? Let me see if I can bring that side by side. In ancient Maya, it's the same thing. In their ancient depictions of so-called soccer. The ball, which I'm telling you represents ancient genetics, that of our African ancestor, an ape ancestor. And this guy has a bird extended from his headpiece. The same thing that is actually on Lord Pakal's tomb lid that I did, that I did in a video here that I told you that that bird up on top that the ancient alien theorists on uh, ancient um Lord I mean on Lord Pakal's tomb lid that they're saying that it represents some type of spacecraft. I'm telling you that Lord Pakal's tomb lid actually shows you his bloodline, his genetic manipulation, and the process that he went through in order to have the likenesses the likeness that was shown on his tomb lid it shows you how Lord Call genetically became after being genetically manipulated and that's why his tomb lid starts off with this creature which is that of the bird which is a representation of the ancient dinosaur and this is why you see a triceratops in the um, stone glyphs on the wall at Angkor Wat and this is why also at um at, um, at Angkor Wat, um, you see that I've made an amazing discovery. How there are turtles depicted in the eaves of that building. You have to see my videos here, people. Through my true paranormal experience and encounter, wherever there is a mention or a suggestion of how these beings were created and a record thereof, I can read it. Here, the bird. The bird and the ball. This being is kneeling identical to the way this being is kneeling. So this is suggesting right here that the Mayan culture is stating the same exact thing. All of these glyphs are interlinking and it shows you from what point that these beings came into the evolutionary stages of mankind at which genetic manipulating point that they came and each culture and each civilization on our planet can be identified with each other in the sequence that they were genetically altered relocated or went to the location of a continent that they were actually sent to and it's a question um, 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 process that calls for these genetic bridgings to occur 
and then become isolated to where they're de genetically bridged in a recyclination process. And I believe, and I can't say I believe. I know for a fact this is the reason why our continents to this very day are actually we're divided culturally. Because it's a genetic, ancient genetic cult-like process that calls for our genetic, genetic um, a sequestration of each other in order to be genetically bridged in a cyclination process that periodically occurs. And it's my position that the Vatican is the main cross-referencing center of these genetics. If you notice, all genetic, um, uh, uh, all all culture lines that can be crossed, all um, all religion lines that can be crossed. All everything that can be crossed, war lines that can be crossed, are of that of the Vatican, who is the main cross referencing point. Cross, I'm making a cross. Hey, let me make a cross better than that. The Vatican, which is cross referencing mankind's genetics under the guise of Christianity. All right, now that kneeling guy that is here in China and in the Mayan culture. He has the same exact thing, people, that's being state, stated right there. They're showing you that they are balancing the ancient genetics of mankind. And this is why you see these ancient birds taken off in position in these different levels, showing you at different levels that this, that this man was introduced to these genetics. In fact, in fact, I do not have a a tomb lid available here of Lord Bacall because I would actually bring it up. If you think about it, I wish I could bring that up because it would take too long for me to look for that right now. I'm not going to do it. If you think about it, Lord Bacall head is turned up in a way on his tomb lid with those birds and he's facing down with that thing on his face. It almost as if the birds are actually letting down their genetics and all that. That's what I'm saying that that's happening anyway. But if you look at Lord Bacall's tomb lid and making the same suggestive behavior patterns, that's what I'm actually saying. This guy reminds me of Lord Bacall sitting in that chair and his face turns up and it's showing you that the, the, the genetics of the bird is coming down and that's why he has that piece at his mouth. Okay, it's just that this guy is taken out of the equation. Look at this as being Lord Bacall sitting in that so-called chair or spaceship that um that they want you to believe that he was in the ancient aliens, of course, and then bring the birds at the top of his of his tomb lid, and you'll see that the genetics were actually taken into Lord Bacall, and it shows you the direction that they're going off on, and everything else is read around. And this is why that bird is there, stating the same suggestion that what is being said over here in um in ancient China. That's being said on the tomb lid of Lord Picard. This is not the tomb, uh, the tomb lid of Lord Picard, by the way. But I'm telling you that this is all suggesting how the balance of ancient genetics were actually referenced. Okay? Now, and this is what all of our, everything, all of our ancient records, texts, and all are referencing. I don't care where they're at globally. The same exact thing is being said that. These people learned how to genetically manipulate the founding genetics of that of mankind and the likenesses of mankind, and, subsequent, and subsequently they altered themselves genetically and 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 then um and outwardly physically. Okay, now I want to take you to. An artwork that I did a video on because I actually stated all of this they're balancing the ball here <coughs> let me take you to the artwork of Picasso because I made a video on this on, on, on Picasso um, artwork this this one here here you have a Asian black man a man of color. You can tell by his nappy hair Picasso gave him and all. Sitting on a founding stone. A square founding stone. Look at this, people. A perfect stone. So, we can make that stone being perfect like that. This megalithic, too. It's a nice sized stone. Look like it might be, what, maybe two ton? perhaps 
might be four thousand pounds. I, I mean, just looking, just looking at it. Okay. So therefore, that tells me that this stone is either representing that of ancient Maya or ancient. Um, but this guy doesn't look mine. He looks more Egyptian. So, Egypt, African continent. So let's get let's let's, let's make this man an African American. I mean, no, no, I'm sorry, not an African American. Let me take that away. I'm I'm African American. So that was a slip of the tongue. A native of Africa. All right. Now, here you have this man sitting on the founding genetics of that of mankind so there's no tree there so we don't have to, this is just a, a different style of encryption that Picasso is using here now why in the hell do you have this man this man look a almost primitive almost primitive in his whole state of being no shirt on muscular and build seemingly African with this little girl in leotards and shorts standing on a ball in front of him and his legs is open by the way what is Picasso saying I can tell you what Picasso is saying let me find the let me find my other picture here. And I'll tell you exactly what Picasso is stating. I put the other picture up underneath here. I'm going to bring that in closer. So what is Picasso st stating here, people? My videos are not scripted, by the way. These videos are... Are taken, and I mean, they're, I mean, I don't have no no script or nothing. So I'm just making these videos. So if I seem like I'm all over the place, I am. Okay. All right. I'll show you what Picasso is stating. You see people in the background here. There's a dog. A black dog. Then you have a white horse over here. You know what Picasso is stating? That he knew about genetic bridging and how the genes of mankind was altered. It is showing you from black, from well, hold on, from the founding stones of blackness. These beings came from those from those genetics came whiteness. From this likeness came this likeness and they mastered the control over those black genes and they're being balanced the same exact thing that is being said here with the Mayan culture and this is why you have hold on the bird being shown hold on there's something else here Where, what am I missing here I'm missing something now one of these, I have, I'm missing something here because in one of these images I'm supposed to have, you know, I wonder if it's cut off. Alright, I should have something here. I'm, I'm missing something. That's why you have the implication of these animals alongside of that of you know what I didn't print it out that's probably what happened I did not print it out and I wish I would have but I can't get it now and it's too late I done started the video and my other image that I was supposed to print out I didn't print out you have the bird there and you have behind this guy over here you have a horse on the headpiece on this side over here and I just did not print it out because that would have made this even more compelling but Picasso image is suggesting that and that's the reason why the horse is there okay now these genetic bridgings people with these animals 
is how you have the variations and likenesses of mankind today. That's why there is such a dramatic change in the likenesses of who we are. They are describing how from black came the lighter virgins to subsequently becoming white. Which nobody to this day has described in detail of how it has happened except for me in my videos. That is what this is all about. This is what this big secret about our ancient history is all about. This is how all of the gaps are filled with why there is such a big and huge mystery about our existence. Then you have people that come in like Zawi Hawass that don't even know what the own what his own ancient glyphs are stating on Egyptian walls and in Egyptian pyramids, which I've shown you. You gotta see this video, people, because this video is very compelling that I actually um made on this here. Okay. I made some extreme I mean some very, very remarkable um um, I'm finding these with this here. So look at my video, okay? I'm referencing this here as well with this Egyptian glyph. And you have people like that <clears throat> that do not even know are in these high places or, 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 or seemingly do not know. We don't know because they might be hired or in place to mislead us because I just I just can't believe that Zawi Hawass has his head so deep in the Egyptian sand and in these sarcophagus that he do not know that it's being referenced that we, his people evolved from that, was bridged over that of the, of the um, reptilian um, beings. And this is why they have the image of the cobra and lions and everything else in Egypt shown bridging over of each other as this creature is showing here. And I, sh and I, I explained in the video, you know what I mean? So then you have our ancient alien theorists that have our heads in space and beings from space coming and genetically altering us and 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 uh, and uh, we're part alien and all of that i mean this is all good but the evidence is here the evidence such a genetic manipulation process on such a large scale there has to be a large-scale record of it all, and it's not kept in the basement of the Vatican. Well, some of it might be, but it cannot all possibly be contained. This knowledge is out there, and artists knew it. There's an ancient secret knowledge behind this, and they're containing You say, well, how come nobody is talking about this? You know why? Because these schools, these ancient artist schools, their mentors... All of them, everything was kept hush hush from from the from the point of us being brainwashed through our religions, which is one form. Then the next um, a process of brainwashing force is through our education. And then the next process of, of brainwashing force is through the ideas behind. If you want to be successful in this business. Which is, would be that of, let's say, if you wanted to go and be an artist, an architect, or uh, and you knew this knowledge, or in this ancient masonry group, or these, these, these groups of co-conspirators that everybody wants to believe in, then you had to keep hush. If you try to tell what you have found or what you had learned, people will not be believe you. You will be blackballed. You would be kicked out. You would be possibly killed. Your family would be desecrated. I mean, you were scared to death. Just like what religion is doing to you today. Just like the same reason why you would not question your clergymen about why are you feeling this way. Or why is this that? Why don't God come and speak to us instead of speaking to you? And, and speak, We have to listen to God through you. And God don't come and talk directly to us. Or what do the cross symbol mean? And you can never get an answer from none of this. You know why? Because the fear factor is in you. The reason why I have my paranormal experience and encounter, because I can say to hell with all of that bullshit, because it's nonsense. It's all nonsense that was created to keep you from seeing the truth, what I just showed you in these videos. 
you are being genetically bridged from one stage, the founding stones, through that of our ape ancestors, through that of our black ancestors, and finally being genetically altered. And all of this is showing you how white came from black. And everything else in between, from Egypt to China to Japan to the Mayan culture, all of that are all referencing how it all occurred and through which creatures that we were genetically bridged and altered through and there is a perfect record that I can read that I can take apart I can take apart our whole entire world's art I don't care if it's Picasso, Bernini, Finzini, uh, Rembrandt, Michelangelo I don't care who it is. It is all stating the same because their success is founded on that of our ancient ancestry, which all is derived from that of the knowledge of who we genetically are. It is in our products today. It's in, it's in everything. I don't care if you go buy a, a, a comforter for your couch or for your bed. I mean, these encryptions are in there. For a purpose, and I can tell you what that is as well, too. But I'll leave that for your imagination to run until I'm actually mainstream and can actually kick it out there and tell you what's going on. In our Disney products, the success of Disney, in our children's products, that's being that, that things that you have from Disney have these cult like images all in their, their product. Tinkerbell, all of this stuff has this stuff in it. Everything, people. The success of these of these companies and these industries that are um, that are marketing who we are back to us. This is the reason why we're so obsessed. These um, these video games on TV, television shows, series, all of this stuff, people, is being marketed back to us, catering to our imaginations. And the reason why we identify so with it is because the people that's doing this to us. Hollywood and uh, uh, and these big major um, production companies, all of these people, they know who we genetically are and what gene and what stimulates our minds because they have the key to where and how we evolved. This is why these people are so successful because they know what drives our imaginations. My name is Jerome Wright. I'm going to end that video there, this video here. You're watching my Jeronification channel. I'm also on Alien UFOs. I will continue to take apart everything ancient in our world until the message is out there loud and clear. I'm telling you that ancient soccer, The inspiration for ancient soccer is based on the idea of seeing these glyphs and misinterpreting them as a game that our ancient ancestors was playing when that was not the actual case. They were telling you how the founding stones of our genetics were balanced, bridged over, and in a sense played back and forth until they were broken down until where that culture of people had mastered or overcame genetics from which they have actually evolved and changed and this is what this is all symbolizing this is what these glyphs are about globally and this is why you have these different likenesses and these different suggestions of, of, of the same thing being said but in a different way it's all telling us the same thing how from black came white or from black came in between of that. Now, go and ask someone. Say, go ask your science um, professor. Go ask your teacher. Go ask your mom. Go ask, go ask anybody. Go ask your clergy. How did we turn white from black? Did I tell you what? Selective process? I can answer the question. I can show you how from black came white. 
I can show you how from black everything in between came. I can tell you how Chinese people came. I can tell you how Japanese people came. Because not only is it all written, not only do I instinctively know through my paranormal experience and encounter, however, I know because there is a record of it. A record that I am paranormally drawn to, instinctively drawn to, and instinctively can feel. It's all there, people, and it tells you how it was done. The creatures that genetically contributed to our altering, or first of all, to our becoming, and then to our altering, and then these per periodic interventions that are taking place. I showed a picture the other day of the uh, of the Pope. I probably won't be able to find it now. And um, in my last video, and it shows how this Pope face is all badgered, badgered and, and chewed up. And I said to myself, this guy done had one genetic cocktail too many because he looked at horrible. And it's amazing how they make excuses for how they look that way. They say either they fell or something happened or they got sick or whatever. My whole thing is, I wonder where in the world is that picture of that poop? I can I can never seem to find. I got so many papers out here and stuff. I need to be better organized. But anyway, see my last video of that poop. But my my position is that if I'm a clergyman, because a lot of our, I'm just going to go over there for a minute before I actually end this video. A lot of our popes and stuff. If you look at, they look horrible. Is this no? That's not it. I mean, they really do look horrible and. I'm stating too much. I'm going to find that picture before I end this. Please, oh, let me find you. Let me find you. Because that is, that is a, 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 no, I can't, no, I can't find it. Anyway, I made a video yesterday, and it actually has that image in there of that Pope. And it shows his face all red and badgered, and he's black and blue up underneath the eyes and everything else. He looks, I mean, he looks a, a mess. He really does. And, and, um. It's amazing how they, is this it? Please be it. Yeah, here it is, here. Good. Here it is, here. I'm going to put this up here. I'm talking about all this genetic bridging and stuff going on. And what's happening with this genetic bridging. Now, how in the world did this man get looking like this? I'm going I'm to leave you with this last in, in, impression. Because I put this up yesterday. It's not just there. But it's also here too, and I'm going to show you how he got to looking like that. There he is. Uh, well, I guess that might be him. I don't even know if that's the same Pope or not, to be totally honest with you. But look at how they look like. Man, men of God. Now, mind you that they have never supposed to have had drugs. They're never supposed to have had alcohol. They're never supposed, I mean, they have supposed to have been leaning a clean and holy and just life. So how in the hell do you become looking like this if you're serving God in the way that you're supposed to be serving him? Now, let's say that he said, well, I fell down and I hit my face and this is the reason why I'm all bruised up like that. But your teeth is yellow as I don't know what. I mean, what, you don't believe in brushing your teeth? And believe in, in uh, they say cleanliness is the next best thing to holiness. So why are your teeth looking like that? I'm telling you that the Vatican is a cross-referencing center. Here, let me put a cross on this guy up the middle of his damn face because the Vatican is the cross-referencing of genetics is cross-referencing point of genetics and my thing is what's happening here to this guy the reason why that guy looks like that is because just like Jesus he cross-referenced him to himself with all kind of genes that are globally now you don't just have the Pope come from out, from out of Cuba you, they go they go everywhere they can go they cross all lines these popes do they cross lines of war, just like I said. They cross lines of divide, of division. They are the neutral people of our world. The ones that have called all of this division in the first place are the very ones that can cross these, these lines that they created. These lines of divide, these lines of separation. You know why? Because they're bent on getting and collecting these genes from globally. From all parts of the world, they and they genetically bridge them. That's why you can go to the Vatican and find cultures of people from all globally across the world because they're being genetically cross-contaminated and genetically altered. 
And this is the reason why he looks the way he looks. Now, I told you too. Look over here. I told you in my last video. Hold on, wait. That you can get this guy over here on his road there with horns. So, what in the hell is going on? This is all about the cross-referencing of mankind's genetics. Now, I'm going to go one more time with this because this is very compelling. Benzini sculpture in Nervi Hall at the Vatican. I'm going to bring that. I know, I'm going to beat you guys to death with this. I'm going to beat you guys to death with that. Again, with the Pope there. There's Jesus. This is supposed to be Jesus emerging from a res being resurrected, being a resurrection from the um, from death, and through a nuclear explosion. And I connected this to being identically in my last video to this. See my video, people, because the trunk of the tree, all of this, and the snake is showing you that this reptilian snake is being bridged over the tree of life. Changing the tree of life to that of reptilian. And that's why you have that alien being there. And there's another um, um, creature here, which is the mother of creation. And this tool here is shown splicing. See that video, people. Because Spinzini used everything that is in this picture in his sculpture. Identical, verbatim. In fact, he, it, it, if you knew how to read this, you'll know that he copied this from this. Verbatim, everything is there, from the cat's head to the snake, and even the trunk of the tree is here. I'm not, I'm going all over the place in this. Is here in this snake. Is um, hold on. If I turn the snake, oh, first of all, you don't even know that there's a snake there. If you turn this sideways, you'll notice that this is the head of a snake. Okay, I gave it the eye and just colored in the teeth with the white. Everything is there verbatim, and that represents this Egyptian glyph of this snake here. Well, you say, where is the cat? I'm going to go real quick because I'm running out of time here. and I don't want to get caught up with going. The cat is in, oh gosh, I don't have the other sculpture here. Well, anyway, the blown hair of Jesus creates like a skull-like um, image. And that skull is the head of that cat that you see there in that Egyptian sculpture. And I don't want to go, I'm going off, off, okay, I'm going off here. I'm going to bring it up real quick now that I bring it up. That cat is right here that's the cat skull right there it's in the blown hair of Jesus right there okay and that is stolen artwork from Egypt that's the cat that's in Jesus's head the snake is there these lines are identical look Benzini in fact I have it right here you see Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can bring that up right quick. I'm going to bring that up side by side. Everything that is right here in the texture of those lines, Benzini even, he copied this, this right here, all over to here. Everything is there. Now, you probably said, what is going on, Jerome? What's happening? What's going on? Well, I can tell you what's happening. The same thing that I've been telling you all along, people. That reptilian ape right there, that ape. There's an image of an ape. You see the right snout, snout, the um, oh, the right eye socket, the left eye socket. It's showing you how mankind, the founding genetics of mankind, which is that of the ape, right there. You see the face of the ape. See that genetic linking chain in the ape's mouth, right there. You see it, right? Yeah, okay, right there. It shows you how our African ancestors, our ape ancestors, were genetically bridged over reptilians and a new line, bloodline was created and that's why the snake has this creature in its mouth snaking out and these people who you worship and not just them people I'm talking about globally I don't care who you are whether you're Muslim, Hindu, or whatever you are, whatever your religion is I don't give a damn if you're a devil worshiper and all I can tell you where the devil came from too people the whole nine I don't care where you are everything is referencing how mankind is cross reference genetically. And it shows you how that man came evolved from this color. And darker images that maybe maybe even from this, because our apes were black. How huh. it shows you let's put this up there. It shows you how that man emerged from this.
do a sequence of genetic manipulations, cross contaminations, and where there is resurrection of one gene, or, 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 or where they're talking about resurrection and all of this stuff here, people, all of that stuff is indicating genetics. I'm going to go with this video. I'm going to let this video go. I made it longer than I wanted to, and I don't want to keep harping on the same things, but I'm telling you people that you need to wake up. Send me viral. You want things to get... I'm just getting warmed up. This is nothing compared to what I'm capable of doing. I'm just getting warmed up. So, I'm telling you that who you are, your identity, is being suppressed from you. And there's a power in knowing who you are. And that's why these people and other famous people globally are enjoying a level of comfort in their life. Something that you could possibly wonder, how in the world can I get this? How can You have it already. They stole your identity from you. Globally, this is happening. Not just with them. They're not just the guilty culprits. They, they are just... Uh, they're probably just... Uh, I don't know. I would, just one of many. A one group of many that enjoy this. These are probably the most sinister ones. But everybody, globally, this is the same exact thing that's actually going on. And once you're able to identify with what's happening, believe me when I tell you, there's a serenity, there's a peace of mind, there's a better understanding in what's going on. It's not even being fearful of, of anything. You know why? Because now you go to where you should be supposed to be in the first place, and that's within yourself. And that's where all of the true answers and all of the true knowledge is. You do not need third party or or a, 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 a person, a messenger, or an in-between person for you and what you believe. Not if you go within yourself. Because therefore, your understanding overrules this here. And I'm telling you people, in everything that is in you, you are equipped with it. We are all built in with these chips that tell us, and I'm just saying in the chips in a sense, but just like my computer that I'm coming to you live on and it stores all of that information, your existence of you being where you are standing now physically or listening to this video, the information, everything that you need to know is within your own imagination, in your own mind. You know why? Because information is never lost. The information from your mother, your father are in you. The information from their mothers, their fathers are in you. And it goes on to infinity. This information is inside of you. All you have to do is go back in yourself. Reverse, reverse, and reverse. And not be afraid of what you are finding and what, is, and what it is telling you. And what, it is, and what is the understanding that is being derived from it all. And this is how you come to understanding this stuff. Because I backed up to a point in my life to where I actually know what is happening around us. In my videos, I explain, I even explain that um, of, um, the existence and cause for what's happening in our universe and how our universe is functioning. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. And you can also see my video. I'm uh, not my videos, but see how I evolved to the point where I am on alien UFOs. Okay, as well. And um, I'm gonna end that video there. I appreciate your viewing um my videos and just share, link my videos to other places, um, other people you might know, other parts of the world. Just link my information across. I mean, globally. I mean, it just. I want to go viral. You know what I mean? I want to be worldwide with what I have to say. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Jerome right here <coughs> again. And you're joining me on my YouTube Jeromeification channel. Okay. Um, in this video, I'm going to be describing ancient um, facts about. Chinese soccer and depictions of, of, of um, ancient Chinese soccer and it's also my position that the idea of soccer actually um, 
is founded on also on that of an encryption style which references that of how mankind was created um, genetically bridged and genetically altered from their originating state of um, that of um, Africa reptilian apes um, Africans reptilian apes and um, other creatures that genetically contributed to the many likenesses of that of today's mankind um, it's my position that there's an ancient knowledge that it is known globally to a select few while the masses are kept in the dark about all of this information this ancient um, information um, there's a denied benefit to the masses which would be that of being medicinal um, just from the sense of the knowledge of having of who you truly are and what creatures you evolved from would give you a sense of direction that would be defeated now this in the next um, stable here it's showing you that in the next sequence here showing you that there's this introduction of these dogs the genetics of the dogs and look at here, people, how it's showing you how these genetics are actually taken in and balanced and, and manipulated and came around, came around, came around. And it's showing you that there's a cyclonation where these genetics now are given back. And then it shows you how the Chinese people had genetically altered themselves. Began here, comes around, showing you the ancient dinosaur, okay, which is the birds representing re that of reptilian. Okay, you heard of the, the the story of the Levitron and the be, and the Behemoth, the Levitron from the ocean and the Behemoth on land, which is actually the ancient reference of that of the dog. That's what this is stating, people. The ancient bird represents a dinosaur. It represents the reptilian bloodline and that of our our land animals. I mean, animals which are, re represents that of the Behemoth. And showing you how these genetics ran back into the likenesses of mankind at a certain point which actually called for the likenesses of these Chinese people or what well, the altering of the Chinese people now you probably saying, I just can't buy into that Jerome well all of this is readable just as I just said I didn't say it in a scientific way I said it in a layman's terms but it explains why the birds the dogs and the ball are all present. It shows you a balancing of these genetics that was introduced into man's kind's genes through via blood and semen. And that's what this is representing. And the founding genetics, which actually all derive therefrom. Let me show you what I'm talking about, first of all. Look at right. Let me come over here to this side. Look at right here. First of all. What in the hell would birds be doing in on a soccer um, game or dogs? Just doesn't make no sense. I don't care how you want to slice it or dice it or add it up. It doesn't make no sense, does it? Until after, I'm going to show you how it does make sense. Showing you that this Asian guy, this Chinese guy, bridged, was genetically bridged through the genetics of birds which represents our ancient dinosaur its genetics and in doing so his genetic these genetics took flight in him showing this guy now balancing these genetics look he's balancing these genetics first of all in his nose these ancient bird genetics which represents that of dinosaur people he's balancing these genetics these genetics are shown in his body flying genetically. Now it's shown that he dominated these genetics. You see here the birds. Look, he's balancing. First of all, there's the birds. Now he's balancing the ball, which is genetics of the birds. Now look, now it's showing you that the ball is that of the birds. Look at this. From here to here, the ball is now the birds he's balancing he balanced those genetics now these genetics are in his body okay and it shows you the direction and the paths that they're actually going in now I'm gonna show you something else
Here is another ancient depiction of the same thing that is being said. <clears throat> Showing you ancient Chinese women. I got a larger image too, by the way, people. Let me take this one down. I'm going to take that down. And I'm because I'm going to come back to this. Ancient Chinese women. Let me go with the larger image. That'd probably be better to do that. And they're saying that they're being taught. And they're in practice of the game of soccer. Now, mind you that the ball is green, which represents that of reptilian genetics. That's what I'm telling you. The red and part of her, the sole of her shoe represents that of blood. Now, what is being stated here? Well, this is the tree of life, people. This is why this tree is present. I'm going to show you some things about this, which makes everything that I've just said in the previously previous image more believable. <clears throat> Always where there is representation of these women and these genetics and these genetic alterings, in most cases, you will find this image far greater than that in the one that you are going now based on the belief system that you've been given. I guess that's a better way to sum it up. All right. Well, now I'm going to give you ancient Chinese soccer. First of all, I'm going to read this to you. Soccer in ancient China. It is supposed to be, um, it is, um, is what I'm reading here is, um, evidently it is Chinese in the Kwai Kingdom 319 BC to 201 BC who first invented it soccer um the soccer game during the spring and autumn period in the next thousand years or so this partic this particular form of sport was known as kanju kickball in ancient china the reference in soccer can be found in the chinese classics records of history okay by simi kwa um 14 i mean what is that um, 145 bc to 87 b 87 bc and strategies of the warning states, whatever that's supposed to mean. However, my thing is that when you understand what is being signified, because when I see this soccer ball being kicked around, first of all, let me show you that this is the cyclonation of, 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 um, of life, of creation, of genetics. That's what this is. That's why you see them in this circle like this. Okay. The soccer ball is being utilized as that of our ancient founding genetics, which represents that as Africans, ape, 